Hello, this is Christoph from DataBridge. Today I would like to share with you how you can tell a ClickSense load script which task it is currently reloading. This makes sense if you have multiple tasks and if you want different behavior in your script depending on which of those multiple tasks of the app is currently reloading it. This solution is for ClickSense Enterprise on Windows. And um, let me show you the final result first, and then you can figure out if this is what you want. I have three lines here of script. One actually that includes some script that I'm going to explain to you. Then we call a procedure. And then I have script variables available, like the task name or the task ID, and even the vreload task tag. And this can be a tag that you've assigned. This solution does nothing if you reload it from the editor. So none of those variables will be set. Here you see the result. Those variables I showed you are empty. But if it's called from a task, and here I have three tasks for the same app, watch in the background. It goes through these steps and after five seconds, I do get this field. So it picked up the tag it had, it picked up the name of the task and this is this one. And if I call just for demonstration purposes, a second task like this, then of course it will show a different start time, a different task name. And in this case, there is no tag for this particular task. So now let's get it set up all together. First, a virtual proxy to give access to the QRS API from script. Then there is a central place for the global scripts that I need. We need a folder connection to this place. And we need a REST connection to talk to the API finally. Number one, set up the virtual proxy. So we go to the QMC, two virtual proxies. I'm just going to quickly run through this because there is a good exp explanation on the click community. This is set up with, uh, with a prefix header that gives the virtual proxy name. Um, then I'll uh, set it here to head authentication with a static user directory. And uh, the variable that I'm passing has also the name header, not to be confused with the prefix here. This is the key. And then I'm passing um, something in that key. And that user, by the way, I'm using an existing one, but you can introduce a new one. So I'm using um, my own name, Christoph Schwartz, and I would recommend to set up a separate one. In order to do this, you at least need to be audit admin. It, it's sufficient to be audit admin or content admin will do the job as well. When you are in the virtual proxy, don't forget in the load balancing section to add uh, the central server node or some more nodes and also under proxies link it to the central proxy otherwise the virtual proxy definition won't work um, so with that number one solved we go to the to the second one central place for a global script and here is a, a christoph click socks trick i abuse the dev hub, I create a sudo extension. So you go here, pick a basic uh, visualization template. We go like include, create it. I don't even need any JavaScript here. So I'm immediately deleting this. Uh, and this is actually a, a script library. Um, and then I add a file and that is, it's is now called who reloads me dot CSS. So this, uh, doesn't work with dot txt or dot qvs. So I have to give it a known file extension and then it's a CSS, uh, but it's not a cascaded style sheet. Of course, this will be click script. So the next thing is we, uh, copy paste well, my script from GitHub. and paste it, save the script. 
I mean, you can place it anywhere else where you like, but the reason I'm putting it as a pseudo extension is that I still have an online editor if I want to make a quick fix to it. And the next, the next thing is a folder connection. So we, we go to uh, an app. I'm opening the app I just showed you before, but we'll do the setup again together. Then you hit create new connection, folder connection, navigate to the place where your ClickSense server has the shared folder that in my case is here. In your case, it's probably somewhere else and um, go to static content extensions. And here you will see the name of the extension as a folder. And here you see the name of the files that we want to load. So we give this uh, name something like include or inkle, um, hit create. Then I, I pretend for a moment that I want to load a file here. Uh, I go all files hit on the, the CSS file, which is click script. You see it here already, the first lines. Um, then we go insert script. Then we remove everything else but the part in the square brackets. And then we put dollar open brackets must underscore include equals. So now this way you made sure um, this is exactly the way the file name is spelled. Okay, next we need the rest connection. So we go here, um, create a new REST connection. You probably have already one if you have uh, worked with REST APIs before. So I do postman uh, echo.com slash get, test the connection. The connection succeeded and we call this HTTP get REST and I create this. So all I need to remember here is the name of the data connection, HTTP get rest. So make sure you get the full name after you gave it a name, it adds your uh, username as a suffix here. So I get the whole string. And now we go back to the extension editor, open this uh, file. I'm adapting the, the rest connection variable with the name we just copied. Um, then I provide the URL to the QRS API using the virtual proxy. Remember before we said header is the name of the virtual proxy. Base URL, it's the server name slash virtual proxy slash QRS. And then we have this header key, uh, which is a pair of two strings provided in double quotes. It's header and it is Christoph.Schwarz. So in your case, you may have a technical user here. And um, the rest you can leave unchanged. And finally, we go back to the uh, load script and where it says um, call execute session. We use the, the variables we created, the rest connection, the base URI and HTTP header. All I need here is this three connections. So it went through, technically it went all right, but it uh, didn't get the reload tasks. And if I run this using a task, for example, this one, I get this information. And of course, in my load script, I can now make some special things. So what, so what you can say here is if reload tag equals string, then I'm loading something on top in the data model. So we can see here, it's an in unexisting uh, dimension. And if I reload it with the right reload task, the data model is adapted. And if I reload it with another task, I expect it to go away again. So this way you can, for example, define by the task to load some additional data as uh, this illustrates. So I hope you like this finding. I was looking for it for really quite some time and 
I'm totally enthusiastic I found it. I hope it's useful for you too. As always, if you like my videos, please subscribe and I'll see you the next time. Bye bye.